Thanks for clicking on the video today, everybody. What we are gonna be going over today is the updated version of my beginner geometry nodes building tutorial. Now, a few people have pointed out in the original version of my tutorial, since they completely redid how geometry nodes work inside of Blender, it basically doesn't work anymore. You can kind of see what I'm doing, but you can't follow along in the new version. So I'm doing this so that we can not only update the tutorial to 3.0, but I'm also gonna add in some things that I've learned since then. So we're actually gonna be able to make them more effectively. The one thing I will say though, that I wasn't really able to find a good solution for is I can make it so that the building is somewhat randomized if you duplicate it and move it around because I can make a seed based on location, but it no longer seems like there's an easy way of making a completely randomized seed for the building. If you don't understand what I mean, don't worry about it. Uh, we will cross that bridge when we get to it. But for now, I'm going to show you how to create the building. And I'm also going to show you how to not only do the blue, green, and red block stack so that we can learn how everything moves around, but now we're going to add in some different colors and we're going to do some more interesting things. So I hope you'll stick around for all the videos in my tutorial. If it's the first time you're checking out my channel, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe and like button. But for now, let's jump into it. All right, let's get rolling. If you want to know what I'm doing or you just want to follow along step by step, I have screencast keys over here and you'll be able to see what I'm typing, what I'm doing. If you have any other questions besides that, just reach out to me and I will make sure to just get a, a timely response. Uh, I know it's really frustrating when you're doing these tutorials and you have a question, you can't reach the person. So I will try and be mindful of that. What we're going to do to start is we're going to hit G and Z and then one because we're saying grab, lock it on the Z axis, move it up one meter, and it's gonna make it sit right there. We are gonna go up to item here. If you don't see this menu, hit N, pops in and out. We're going to lock the S scale because I want this to always be two meters. We could, you know, there might be some things we can do with like making different levels, but I, I don't really want to get into that. Every level is going to be two meters. That's the easiest way of doing it. So we're just going to stick to that. We are also going to change this scale to five and this scale to five. So now we have a block that is two meters tall, 10 meters width and length. We are going to assign a material to it. So I think by default in 3.0, I believe at least this beginner block has a material already on it, which I don't think was the case before. We're gonna change this to, we'll call this red because we're gonna use red as our just our base color, the base of the building. And I'm then going to hit F2. I'm gonna rename this, just call it base. And I'm gonna drop that into this collection. The collection, this will make more sense. Just kind of try and stay with it uh, for now because uh, the way that I like setting things up is to take a random object from that collection. So we're going to take an instance from it. Uh, that's again, we're going to get more into that. But for now, this is quite important. And we'll move this over here. I'm going to hit this button right here, new material, I'm going to call this one green. I'm going to go like that. And then this is going to become middle A. Because we're going to have more. So we're just going to go middle A, middle B, middle C, as we get higher and higher. I'm going to do this one more time and I'm going to drop this in here. We're going to call this roof a hit this button again, change this to blue. And there we go. Now I'm going to move these out of the way. Some people may come in and click on this and do uh, all the geometry nodes on this. But for this particular one, I find it actually works better if you just make a cube or a plane and then we're going to put all the geometry nodes onto this. So we're not actually going to see this plane. Uh, we're just going to be calling these objects so we can raise this up. I, I personally like to keep everything sort of in this viewport. So I'm going to be cutting this one up and merging them and things like that. But if you just pull this up and you come over here, you'll see geometry node editor hit new. And now this is what we have. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make the red block appear as this is going to be the base of the building. So let's go and say object 
info. Actually, wait, collection info. So we are going to get base and then join geometry. Now, if I do this, what we want to do, ah, that's something I forgot to do. So click on, we're just going to move all these back actually. So I should not have made this mistake this early in the tutorial, but the map scale, and this is actually really important for geometry nodes. So I'm kind of happy I did this. What's happening here is when we say reset children, it's basically saying, put it back to this location. But this is what Blender sees this block as because I have these scales, uh, the X and the Y scale turned up to five. So Blender actually sees this block that we've distorted. It's not act the, to Blender. This block doesn't actually look like that. It looks like this. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to unplug this for now. I'm going to snap this back and then I'm going to hit GZ one again, just so that it's in the middle. I'm going to then hit control and a you can also just come up to this and go object apply all transformations and then i'm just going to move that back out of the way i'm going to move this back here gz1 object apply all transformations move this over here and then we'll go i'm holding shift and s by the way and then going up selection a cursor if your cursor is not right in the middle, you can hold shift and S cursor to world origin. So you can go like that and then go up. So we'll do this one more time. GZ one. You can also hit control a here instead of going up to the object menu. It's the same thing. It just is sort of the hotkey for it. We'll do all transformations. Now we'll move this over here. So if we put them back in the, the location it was before, it, uh, it's not going to really make a difference because we've applied those transformations. And as I said, we're moving this around, but Blender still sees it as being this block at this location. So let's see what happens now that we've done that if we plug this in. Now we have the correct shape popping up. This is something I think is really, really important for geometry nodes, but it's a very easy thing to miss because a lot of people are probably used to having it so that this scale, you, you change it, you're interacting with it, it's no big deal. But you, you do have to understand that Blender Blender is always going to work best when the scale is one, 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 because it's not going to be distorting it in any weird way. And you're seeing the same thing that Blender is seeing. It's a bit of a weird concept. You know, that's something that if you are having some weird shapes and geometry nodes, check your original scales. And I think that uh, may solve the problem from time to time. So here, I think that this is all we really have to do for the base level. Uh, we may end up uh, adding a few things in, but I think for the most part, that is what we're going to do. So what I like to do is you can hold shift and right click and actually just drag this across and you can make this a little. I'm going to unhook this. You can actually make this like a little dot here. If you ever wondered how people do that, um, this just lets you organize your nodes a little bit more. So I'm going to bring this up and I'll just kind of go like this. And what this is just going to let me do is it's just going to be easier to kind of look at because we are going to have quite a few colors going on. This one for now, we can just kind of move out of the way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this. Now I'm going to hit shift P and you're going to see this red box appear. So the best way of thinking about this is this is like a group. When we have a bunch of nodes, we can actually move them all around together. If you're familiar with Unreal Engine, this would be like hitting C for a comment. But what I like about this is that you can actually come over here to where it says node. If it has color, we're going to bring this down to red. So now we can visually see that this is going to be the red portion of our building for the base. We're going to change it to actually look like a real building, but this is how it's the easiest way to visualize how everything is being set up. And next, I may actually just drag these two things over here. Now, this is where things are going to get a little bit weirder because the middle one is definitely a step up. So in the old version, we used line. Now it's called mesh line. And if we plug this in here, you're going to see that the line appears. So let's now add instances on points. If we do that, we're not going to see anything. So what we have to do is we actually have to go and get the instances that we're going to be putting on it, which in this case is going to be this green block. So let's go 
collection info, geometry. Now, just getting the collection isn't enough here. You are going to actually have to go separate. Nope, not separate geometry. You're going to have to go separate components. That's the one, not geometry. So we plug this in here. We take instances. We plug it in here. We check pick instance. And now we select middle. So what happens here is you can see that it's over in the distance. I don't completely understand why this happens, but if you hit separate children, reset children, then it's going to be sitting right here. But that doesn't look right. It looks like everything is squished on top of each other. So let's remember that the offset is one meter. You can see it right here. Whereas with the block, it is actually two meters. So let's just click right here, two meters. Now everything is working. But again, this doesn't quite look right because we don't want the first floor of the middle floors to be on the, the ground level. We need our base to go first. So easy enough, we can just go two. Now we have stacked all the green cubes onto the red cube. In this particular case, count is set to 10. But what we can do is we can take this empty node here. So the way that you can make a new variable that you can interact with geometry nodes, or you can interact with your geometry nodes, is you can actually just grab off of this, plug it in here, and it will become a new variable. If I backspace this here and I plug this in here, notice how this is becoming purple and you can see that the node color is changing. If I plug it in here, it's green. It will actually create a variable based on what you plug it into. Uh, I don't know if there's a limitation on this or anything like that. It seems like it works with pretty much everything, but uh, I'm sure that there's, you know, sort of some do's and don'ts. If you go over to group and we click on count, let's name this floors. Again, if you don't see this, N is the button that you have to hit to bring up the menu. So we're going to make this a max of 20 and the default is going to be, I don't know, five. So we can bring this up and down. And if I zoom out a little bit, if I go up to 20, can't go any higher. It's always like one. So we're going to have at least one floor. Maybe I'll just leave that back at 10. And I think for now, this is okay. I think that we can, we're going to have to come back to this one and do quite a few things. Uh, so what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to highlight all this. I'm going to hit shift P. I'm going to drag this down and I'm also going to hold shift and the right mouse button again. And I'm just going to come up here. And I know that this might look a little bit messy. I personally just like doing it this way because I, I, I don't know. I find that I have an easier time looking at the nodes when they're sort of in straight lines as opposed to going in all the curves. It's just, I guess, what I've gotten used to. So I will be spending a bit of time just to kind of clean this up. Be way, like easier ways to kind of snap them. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Uh, and then we're also going to clean up all these nodes sort of at the end. But this is just sort of my, my visuals at the moment because things can get a little, a little crazy. So go like that. And now we're going to click on this white box here. We're going to go to node. We're going to make this green. And then if you right click on it, you can actually name it. So let's go green squares. And we'll go rename this one to red squares. Let's save the project before I forget and want to lose my mind. We'll call this Blender Geo Buildings 3.0. Doesn't matter. Actually, I'm not going to put the point. Oh, just going to call it three. So yeah, highly recommend that you save it. Uh, Control S is actually the hotkey to save it. You can see it happening at the bottom there. I hit that at least once a minute uh, when I'm actually working because you just never know uh, if something's going to crash or even if the power is going to go to something like that. So you don't want to lose your work. It's, it's a hotkey that you should be using a lot. Now, the last step that we need for part one is getting that blue block to sit on top of the ones that we already have. And the trick about this is that you can't just make it appear at the top. You have to have it so that it will scale up and down with the other levels. And we are going to be following a fairly similar node setup. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy these. Oops, hit cut. 
control C, control V, move them over here. Except now I'm going to change this to, oh, not base, I'm going to change this to roof. Now, the reason why I really like having this floors node here is because we can actually do some math to always get the correct answer. The offset is going to remain at two, but we are going to have the start location change. And I'm going to do that by adding in a math node. And this is going to be multiply add. And what we're going to do is the value is going to be two because it's going to be the height of the floors, which is two times the amount of floors plus the height of the base, because the base is always going to be there. And I'm going to do this. So this comes into the multiplier. The value is two and the append is two. From here, there's one more step because we can't just plug that right in. This is actually a vector. Uh, meaning that it has three directions, the X, the Y, and the Z, but we are only interested in changing the Z axis because that is where the start location is right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a combine X, Y, and Z. This value goes into the Z. We plug this into the start location. Just do a little bit of a cleanup here. Over like this, and there we go. So, the reason why we didn't see anything appear is because this is not plugged in. We're going to go count one now. Collection, ah, so that's kind of interesting. I've never seen that error before. So, this collection actually has the plane, which we're going to call geo node base. So when have caught that, we're just going to put that back in the regular collection. So what has this done? We now see that that square is on top of that. But this is the important thing. As we move up and down, the top of the building is not going to change. So that is going to be the end of part one. In part two, we're going to still be working with the color blocks. It's not going to work as much, but we're going to start playing around with it a bit more to see more colors, more options, and how we can make that move around. The third part is going to be actually texturing the building. That part's, you know, nothing too crazy, pretty standard. And then we are maybe going to have a part four. I haven't quite decided on that yet, but that should wrap it up. So I think overall, this actually is more intuitive. To me, at least, it makes a lot more sense. I can look at this and everything just seems to flow a lot better. I can grab all this here. I'll just do Shift P, just move this. Actually, I guess I'll just leave that right there. But we are gonna go to Node, Color, make that blue. Let's rename it, Blue Squares. And we're, we can rename these when we actually start putting in, we'll call them roof, middle, base, that kind of stuff. But for now, this is all you need to know. We have the ability to move this around. We can make them different heights. And I think it's pretty cool. Geometry nodes, extremely fun. I hope that if this was the first time you've seen geometry nodes, that this can sort of help you uh, get to the next level. It's, it's at least, this project was enough for me to really get interested in it. I haven't done anything crazy. I'm not like Aaron Dale where, you know, that guy's working on a different planet when it comes to geometry nodes. But I do think that learning uh, this side of Blender is beneficial to uh, what I do for work, which is ArchViz. And I think that you're going to start seeing more and more geometry nodes, not only for creating cities, but also for creating customizable furniture. So that's that's why I wanted to get into it. Uh, if you did find the video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button, you hit the subscribe button, and then you hit the next button. I will see you over in part two, everybody. Take it easy.